We hear a lot about the word layering in design. Talk to us about what layering is and how you use that. Well, I think layering is interesting because if you look at where we've been in terms of, of design, where it's been this minimalism, and you had maybe eight elements in a room, uh, and it was almost like a haiku of, of design where each element counted for everything. Those rooms look great, they look wonderful in pictures and in, in, in books, but they're not really made to live in because let's face it, we all have lots of stuff. We come into that room with our, with our iPhone and our, our newspaper and, and, and your glasses, whatever it is. Once you add your own elements to that room, you've kind of thrown off the balance of that room. And so uh, layering is of a room, having multiple elements in a room makes it much easier for you to live in that room because when you bring in your things, it actually feels like it's just another element. And so just as in fashion, where layering is the, is the sort of the, the, the watchword right now, it's also, we're seeing it more and more in home design. You, you have recently written a new book. Talk with me, us about what the impetus was for the book and what consumers will get from it as they're reading it. The name of my book is The New Elegance. Well, you know, there are so many beautiful picture books out of, of, des, of beautiful design projects, and I really wanted this one to be a little different so that after each chapter, uh, there's a section that sort of says, here was the the real design challenge of that project and how you can actually learn from that because every house has its its strengths and its weaknesses and it really it's important to be able to figure out how you can take something from a design book and apply it to your own home. And why the new elegance? What is it that makes it new? The, the difference between the new elegance and the old elegance is really that people in the old days, elegant used to be, that was the, 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 fit, the room that you used uh, only when company came over or, or, or uh, uh, on holiday, in holidays. And what I really believe is that elegance is about using it every single day, using your good china, using your, 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 your silver, and using every room. And if you're not using a room, figure out what's going to take for you to start to use that room. If it means putting a television in it, put a television in it. But use every single room in your house fully every day. One of the things is talking about living beautifully, living luxuriously. Talk with us about that. Well, I think that, that today there is, there is no more need to have to make a trade-off between living really beautifully and living comfortably. That people don't want to have to set, sort of make that trade-off. They want it to be comfortable. They want it to be practical to live in. They don't want to have to worry about spilling things and, 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 and leaving marks and leaving stains. They don't want to have to sit in something that's uncomfortable just because it's fashionable. So it's really talking about those sorts of trade-offs and figuring out how you can have the best of both worlds. From a consumer's point of view, how can they do that in their home? Let's say if they can't afford a designer like Timothy Corrigan. Well, I think you know color is one of the most um, underrated uh, and most important aspects of a house. Color makes a huge difference in terms of the way you feel in that room. So you really should look at, at not just what colors you like, but think about what you want to feel in that room. So if you want a room to be happy and, 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 and up, blue is a great color. Blue is the color that is the most favorite color around the world. and it, so people associate it with happiness. If you want to have a room that, where you feel like energized, red is a great color for that. If you want a room that's calming, green is a good color. So look at the colors and think about what you want to feel in that room. And when you're saying that about color, it's not always about making the entire room one of those colors. Talk about how you add those pops to bring that in, because many people start with a neutral palette. Right. Well, I think that's the great, the, the best ways actually is to start with a neutral palette, because to live in a room that is all yellow or all blue or whatever can become overwhelming. So starting with a neutral palette and then adding touches of color, um, I think it's important not to use too many colors in one room. I, I actually try to limit it to around three colors in a room, because other than that, after that, it becomes a little overwhelming. But again, use color as punches, as pops, to sort of create the atmosphere that you want to have in that room. Many people think, oh, I can be a designer. I just want to say, you did not start off in the design world. Tell us about how you started off and then how you were able to build such a fabulous company. Well, thank you. Yeah, I actually did start. I started in a totally different career. I was working in, in advertising, running, running a big advertising agency in Paris. And it was really Paris that opened my eyes. It was being exposed to all of the, the beauty uh, of Paris. Uh, my, I decorated my own apartment, and it was featured in a magazine. And people slowly started asking me if I would design their apartments and I realized and their homes and I realized I was enjoying that more than my day job so I switched uh, switched careers and I think it's really um, it's so important to realize that that not everyone is a designer you actually have to pay you your dues and I don't mean in terms of, of um, paying 
in money monetarily way, it's it's making mistakes, learning the mistakes, learning about scale and proportion, learning all those other things where you can make a lot of costly mistakes uh, for clients or for yourself if you do it yourself.